Thanks to Swiss Locker. This is the MPNFL Division 2 footy show. Wonderful to be here. Somerville thrashed tired, and we're joined by their coach, Brad Canavan, and their star recruit, Paul Fermanis, who's had an outstanding year. Hastings lose to the Red Hot Rye, who made it four wins on the bounce. Seaford just two weeks ago inflicted Keringle's only loss to date so far, but are no longer final certainties after their second loss in a row as their conquerors, Lang Warren, cement a spot in the top three, certainly for the time being and probably for the rest of the season. Lange in good form, having won nine of their past ten. And two consecutive defeats to Chelsea see them drop to fourth. Welcome to the show. My name's Dan Lonigan. Good evening to Chris Holcomb. Welcome, Hulks. Thanks, mate. Exciting night. It is. And there's been a lot going on in the world of footy. G'day, Blackers. G'day. How are you, Dan? Going well. And we welcome our guests. And we've been on the bandwagon of this footy club all year because yeah. I think like I think like everyone, we wrote them off at the start of the year. And I remember having a conversation with the coach who I hadn't met before and it's uh, been delightful getting to know him throughout the season, Brad Canavan. And he said after they got beaten by Seaford by a point, he said, I think, Dan, we're going to be a little bit better than most people thought. And my God, they are. Brad, welcome to the program. Good to have you with us. Awesome, Dan. Thanks for having us. And, you, love, uh, you love his energy, Dan, don't you? <laughs> I do. I, I, reckon he's, I reckon he's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. He's been great for the comp. When he said, and of course, I still didn't know a great deal about Sammy, I think we're going to be a little bit better. I said, well, that's a coach with confidence in his team. And we didn't know much about them then, but they've ticked all the boxes. And one of the main reasons why they've gone well is Brad, of course, was heavily involved in the Southern Football League. And Paul Fermanis has been a star with uh, the Oakley Districts team for a long, long time in that comp. Competition and uh, he had a year at Hillsville uh, playing in the Yarra Valley League. Unfortunately for Paul, his timing wasn't great. He left Oakley <laughs> to play for Hillsville. Right. They yeah. won a premiership. He then left Hillsville <laughs> yeah. to go back to Oakley and they <laughs> won a premiership. <laughs> so hopefully he stays at Somerville oh, and yeah. they might win a premiership. Welcome, yeah. Paul. Good to have you with us. No, thanks Maybe they get rid of him and then they'll win the year. We might get rid of you at the end of the year. And you'd be a chance. They'll get rid of me this year. It was only a one-year contract. So you like me to stay longer than one year? Yeah, I'm there for life. I'm there for life at Sunday. I'm loving it and I'm loving playing under Wigger as well. So, um, yeah, a bit unfortunate, obviously, those two years. But, um, yeah, making the change has been, it's been amazing. So, love it. So, why did you decide to come across to the MP NFL? Was it because of Brad? <laughs> um, well, getting to Sunday was mainly because of Brad. I've met him a couple of times before um, signing. So, uh, no, me and my partner, she's been down at uh, Mornington for a while. So, we obviously moved down there. And just the travel to Oakley, uh, just too much. So, Having a young family it was just nice to come closer to home, and yeah, it was lucky enough to. Brad got the role there, and I knew a few of so the. So you're builders. living down the peninsula then now, Mornington now. Yeah, I've yeah. been down Mornington for about three and a half years. So Ooh, um, is it a bit far to travel to Sunny? We might uh, maybe Mornington <laughs> yeah, boy in a couple uh, of years. <laughs> uh, I've spoken to Goose. I see Goose here all the time at uh, Woolworths actually. Oh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's Ben yeah. Square. Yeah, oh, so, so well, we might we'll probably, if we you know if we don't go up, we might play them next year. So it'll be uh, quite funny, but not very happy uh, playing on the week. So. And, and Brad, how are you enjoying it? I mean, do you like the fact that you've proved everyone wrong? Oh, I'm, I love coaching and I've, I've loved um, getting the job at Summy. It's been um, been an awesome um, experience to date. But um, I'm not convinced we've proved everyone wrong. Um, I think we've been uh, a bit of a surprise packet. We came into the season a bit of a mystery side. Everyone had sort of thought with those big outs that we would slide down the ladder. And, um, which they, you know, in a which sense, was fair. Leave, leave and... Losing Rolf, McGuinness and Speedy, who were yeah. three of your, your and best Everett. ball movers, and, and Levi Hughes as a, um, a, a, another player as well. But you get from Fermanis, you get Hoganberg back, Gillis, who probably come back a bit earlier than you expected. Yep. You, um, Big Roberts has yep. come back to the club, yep. or playing really good football. Yeah. So, so your ins, you know, your ins have been fantastic as well. They have. Now, now your nickname is Wig. What do they call you, Wig? Oh, well, yeah, it's probably... <laughs> I don't know. Long story, Dan. Yeah. A bit like the Jane Bunn story last week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll make it a bit shorter, Wig. I'll, I'll trim it, I'll trim it. So, about under 10s, 11s, 12s. Look, I'm, big, I'm a big unit, so um, I used to come off in junior footy and my mum would come up to me and um, give me something to eat at half time to give me energy for the second half. And one of the boys just shouted, man, you're a wig pig, and <laughs> just stuck. Like stuck yeah. So that was like when I was 12. Why do they call Roberts Rooter? Are we allowed to ask that? <laughs> um, he's either, I'm not totally sure, but um, yeah, oh. I call him Tom. I'm very polite, but um, 
Yeah, he is the big first rooter. So. Yeah, yeah, well, because yeah. I, I, that was the first time I heard it was we were calling the match Chelsea and Summy, and we had problems with our uh, feed, I think, late in the match because it was wet. Yeah. And I remember standing next to you in the last quarter, and uh, I thought, this guy's a very nice guy, and you saw me because I said, uh, you're not far away, Brad, and you said, how are you, Dan? Yeah. And I'm thinking, gee, he's saying good day to me, and the game is as tight as a drum, <laughs> and then everyone's calling out, Ruta, go here, Ruta, go there. I thought, wonder what they're calling Ruta. Yeah, I'll have to uh, dig a little yeah. deeper, but, you know, the mind wanders. <laughs> what about you, Paul? What's your nickname? Uh, I normally just Paulie, but, um, yeah, down at Summy, they're, they're going with uh, Poppy. I think G-Man, um, <laughs> Gillis has given me that one. He thinks I'm the small forward, like all of Poppy, but uh, <laughs> I put him back in his place every now and then. So You made an interesting point, Brad, when I spoke to you after the Chelsea game, having a couple of beers, and you said that... Um, it was a stoppage competition, or is a stoppage competition in the Southern League, yep. and Paul's come across as that stoppage player that you required. What has he brought to the team that they urgently needed, as well as being an excellent stoppage player? Yeah, obviously, um, he's a fantastic stoppage player. He's got a leap breakaway speed, um, which I, I'd obviously seen in the past, um, which I knew would benefit us in the MP and FL. Um, probably his leadership. More than anything, he's, a, he's quite a reserved sort of guy, but um, yeah, obviously got a good presence on the ground. But which is important when you've got a, a youngish group. We, yeah, you've obviously got Sedgy and Mackenzie and Allsop and 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 Sutton, all those yeah. sort of guys who yeah. have been long servants of the clubs. But you've got a lot of youth. Yeah, we've got some terrific kids, and um, I mean that was Troy Merks. It was just huge on our kids mm. when I was um, in the process of getting the job or going, you know, trying to get the job. And, um, you know, I just talked to him about, he came to watch me coach and they, they saw Paul play and they said, oh, can you get a hold of him? And I said, oh, maybe I can. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so for me, Poppy's uh, leadership, that presence he has, uh, trains with real purpose as well mm. and doesn't miss training. Um, that's why he's an outstanding footballer. Now, how different is the comp to the Southern Football League? Is it a better standard uh, comp? I mean, and is yeah. it is it less of a stoppage comp than the Southern Footy it, League? It is a less of a stoppage uh, competition. It's, and look, I, I think it's a lot better as well. Mm. Uh, even playing Div Two compared to Div One, I think you know you still get your good games in Southern Div One, but you know the Mornington Footy League uh, it's pretty strong. Um, and you know, I, th I think that comes from you know the younger the younger kids. Uh, you know the mates you can see around them. You know they're all growing up together can, compared to out in Southern. Um, you know, they all just come together. So, and obviously having Wig, you know, at the footy club, he's obviously brought him a bit of structure and um, got us all together as well. So, um, it's been great. You lost three in a row, and there was that Chelsea loss, which I still wonder whether it's the one that got away because you kicked one eight in the second half. Brad, you and I have discussed that at length. Uh, and now you've won your past two, including that win against Seaford, and we saw how happy you were. Mm. I mean, you were. Absolutely ecstatic. Yep. But were you relieved as well that, 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 that you got a big scalp because they'd just beaten Coringle the week before thinking, we're not out of this yet? Uh, no, absolutely not. We, um, we, I went into that game you know, really confident at, um, at sea for the conditions. Um, sort of suited us with our big bodies, with Paulie and uh, Hoagie in the middle. Mm. And, um, yeah, it was a, we played really well, obviously, in that the month well, prior. Well, you, you had, you know, you... Mm. Uh, apart from the first and last quarter against Red Hill, yeah. you, you were in a winning position against Coringle. Yep. Um, Lang Warren was probably a little bit different, though. Yeah, they probably got hold of you. That they, one, quarter. Nine goal yeah. quarter. That was our worst yeah. quarter for the yeah. year. And yeah. we, we played poorly against Hastings off the bye. But um, but after Lang Warren, we came out and kicked six to two in the last. Yes. So we, we peaked up again. Yeah. Um, so I had confidence going into the next week after that. So you've been in really good positions against the, the better quality side. And, and the percentage has gone up 9% from 107 to 116. Hastings is 111 and Seaford is 117. We'll talk about Hastings shortly. They've got a propensity, Hastings, of dropping games they shouldn't drop. They did it last year, Chris, didn't they? So, yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, we thought a couple of weeks ago, some of you were out of the race. They're yeah. right back in it, aren't they? I mean, everything yeah. needs to go their way and they've probably got to right. run the yeah. table in the last three games of the season, which is an NFL term, which means they've got to win the last three. But well, they're, they're capable, they're aren't they? So. Yeah, just thought I'd tell I'm you that. I'm an NFL fan. I yeah. know that. Yeah. I wasn't Pistar, sure whether you were. Pistar Pistar Pribby the next two weeks as well. That's huge. So they've really got to be switched on and get, get some more percentage through those. And obviously you rely on the results. And then the last game of the year is Hastings, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's three games that they should... That will they start favourites, but I also yeah. think that Seaford are in a position where they would start favourite in every one of their games as well. They need to lose one, so that Hastings game in round 17 is going to be huge. Seaford versus Hastings, so you guys yep. will be watching that pretty closely. 
Hastings. Seaford played Hastings. At Hastings. At Hastings, round 17. that will be the one. That's a big yeah. game too. That's yep. the one. So do you look back, Paul, at the close ones that you've that you've dropped and think uh, uh, what might have been, or do you yeah, just have do. to move on now? No, no. Look, I personally, I can't sometimes move on. Uh, you look, especially when, in a, when you're in a position like this, mm. you look back at, you know, the... the um, the Chelsea game, where we were four or five goals up at one stage. Yes. And then, you know, we had um, the Karingle, Karingle. You know, yeah. goal down, kicking with a six-goal win, and we don't <laughs> score. It's, you don't score in that last quarter. It kills make you. it four or five mm. into yeah. the breeze, you know. But yeah. um, yeah. early on, you know, the round one, that, you know, we just take that. But nah, there, yeah. there were a couple of um, ill-disciplined acts in that Chelsea match, weren't there, Brad? And a couple of 50-metre uh, penalties. There was a, some puzzling decisions as well. It was just one of those things where you probably didn't get the rub of the green at times in that match when you, you had the game in control. That goal before half-time turned yeah. the match, didn't it? Yeah, I, I watched that one on the tape and, um, yeah, probably very painful after I watched it on the tape. But, um, yeah, that's just the way it goes. The umpires make decisions and most of the time they've been really good this year, but occasionally... There's a couple of questionables, but do you um, do you talk then to the advisor to to the umpire's advisor and say, well, I'm not sure the young guy's trying very hard. I'm yeah. not sure he got that right. I reckon he certainly got that wrong. Or is it something that you're not able to do? Uh, no, I've been I've spoken to them a couple of times this year just to, to question their thoughts on a couple. There was a one or two at Hastings as well that I I was a little bit unsure about the interpretation, but. Like, um, after the Seaver game, and I know we won, and it sounds like I did it d deliberately because we won, I, I sent a message to Carl Fletcher saying I was really happy with the umpiring in those conditions. I thought mm. they did a really good job. The, the young they fellas... really looked after us that day. Mm. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, I, I, <laughs> yes, I used to. He messages us sometimes after a game, or any issues, boys? And yeah. yeah so. well, that's great. Yeah, that's that's, cool. that's, that's called good communication yeah, skills, Chris. That's right. Do you think it makes a difference, though? Do you go to the advisor? Do you think that they go and work on that during the week and take that feedback on and, and share it with their guys? Well, there's a lot of young kids. Sorry to interrupt. No, there's, a lot, there's a lot of young junior umpires yeah. that are coming through. We want to encourage and them. And we, we do. We need to encourage yeah. that. It's no, not but just the negative stuff. He, you know, Brad just said he does message them about the positive yeah. stuff as well. No, they so were very appreciative of what, what I sort of marked on the tape because they used it for, you know, their development. So, um, you know, as much as I was, a few of them were a bit perplexing for me, I got some clarity and yeah. then, um, you know, I also gave them some positive feedback, you know, when I thought it was due. Because we see in life, guys, way too much, don't we, where people are happy to, not happy, but they will pull someone up if they've done something wrong, but they don't praise them enough when, when they've done That's a good right. job. Norman Preston, we praise, mate. I'm good, yeah, Chris. Praise. You have to do that. I'm sure Black is you doing the landscaping yeah. business. Oh, I'm sure. And Brad does cool. as coach and Paul does as a concreter <laughs> and I do to my kids because I, I'm not in charge of too many people. <laughs> anyway, that's the way it goes. Thanks to Peninsula Safety and Workwear, Hastings lose to the Red Hot Rye. It could cost Hastings a spot in the finals. Rye, four wins in a row. They lost Blackers, uh, the unlosable almost to Pearsdale early in the season. I thought, here we go again. They lost all these close games last year. And this year, though, they're winning those, particularly in the second half of the year, and they've been one of the big improvers, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, well, they have in the second half of the year, and what a wonderful win for that footy club on, on Saturday. They won all three games. But more importantly, they had a, a wonderful night to celebrate the team of the decade from 2006 to 2015. So... Had a, a really good night at the, the Rye Footy Club. Now, you're going to read that team out for us, aren't you? And, and tell us about some of the players, Blackers, because I'm sure you would have, A, either yeah, so played ben, against them or ben coached Winters, against them. So, in from the back line, Ben Winters, Kerr, Ryan Taylor and Lee Morse. Um, Darren Booth on the halfback flank. Adam Kirkwood, who's the current coach now, and Billy Kerr. The, the centre line was uh, Andrew Dunn, Lee Clark and Jai Lloyd. The half-forward line was Aaron Finlay, Ben Holmes, who... Last year, played in a premiership with Dramana. He spent some time at Vermont, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Did, yeah, and multiple and well done, Dan. Sean Kane. Good stuff. Thanks, um, Chris. In the forward Come line, home. Aaron Fitters, Steve Ryan, who was a really good goal kicker, and Grant Wilton. <laughs> Rhett Sutton was there, Ruckman, Matty Nolt, and Ben Kane. Um, their their rover on the interchange, Matty McIndo, who played 200 games a couple of weeks ago. Sam Smith, Andrew Dean, and Chad Ambrose. And their coach at the time for this decade was yeah. Christian O'Brien. Pretty Red good Sutton was captain. So really good night for the Rye Footy Club and really good for them to have a, an amazing day and to celebrate well into the night. They're great, those teams of the decade. Oh, I think yeah. it is. Have it up at the club, give the players something to look back on. Yeah. Be proud of when they walk back into the club. It's because great. Because realistically, boys, like you, you, you spend 10, 
15 years at a club maximum. Um, sometimes you, you go a bit shorter journeys if you're at other, other clubs, but if you stick to one club, 10, 15 years is probably maximum. So it's good to come back to that era. Does it look like there's some darn good players in that team? Oh, I, I mean, good. Blackers, if you had to pick one player, Who's the best player of that team, or is that a bit harsh? I mean, Adam Kirkwood's obviously been an outstanding player. Yeah, he's player, been outstanding. Ben, ben Holmes and, mm. yeah. and um, Stevie Ryan. Stevie Ryan was a wonderful contributor, especially consistency with goals. Excellent. Well, Ben Holmes has been around yeah, forever, he's been, and he's yeah. on the way back with Tramana as well, hoping to be oh, there the end come end finals. Career, but, um, <laughs> Still a handy player. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, they've talked him into coming back, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But thanks to SPT Performance, we'll be back with more of the Second Division Footy Show for the MPNFL. Get your game face on. One of our great sponsors is SPT Performance as we continue with the Second Division Footy Show for the MPNFL. And we have our guests from the Somerville Footy Club, their coach, Brad Canavan, and their star recruit, Paul Fermanis, and uh, Summy going beautifully. One team not going so well because Summy beat them a couple of weeks ago, and they'd beaten Coringle two weeks ago, and we thought, here they come. Seaford, who were relegated last year from First Division, as we mentioned, the only team to beat Coringle, and they've been well and truly taken to the cleaners by Somerville and then Langy and uh, Lang Warren are in great form Blackers you must be delighted you've got a huge involvement down there you're taking all the credit they've <laughs> won is, nine absolutely. of the past oh, ten okay. they shared the goals around numerous goal scorers and uh, Aaron yeah. Walter most importantly kept goalless yeah it was really good to um, just keep him goalless last week and but it also comes from the, the midfield and and the supply but um, yeah, Lang Warren have been playing really good football and um, I think that they're best at the moment. You know, they're coming to a, a, a time of the year where they've got most people available. Yeah. They still had a couple out last week, but they've still got most well, people available. According to Josh Beard, I contacted him today. Uh, Jess Murphy, not far away. Gerard Brown's had a couple in the reserves. Gerard. Gerard, I should Gerard. say. We know how important he is. He's, yeah. And look, he's been a, an amazing footballer yeah. um, for... for 10, 12 years, you know. He probably played in their last premiership side. It's probably the last bloke to be called Gerard for a while, Gerard. too. Gerard. Yeah. yeah, some people call uh, Gerard Waitley Gerard. Oh, I think he likes Gerard to be called Gerard. Gerard. Well, Gerard. I did work with him for a long time, yes. Yeah, I worked with Gerard Waitley for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Waitley yeah. Waitley for a long time. You know that. I'm not name-dropping. I'm just telling you okay. someone I work with. <laughs> you are an idiot. There you go. An excellent if performance by Langy. You'll probably say that you work with Black as an old. I'll be saying that, no doubt. I'll be saying that when I leave here and say I'll ring people up and say I've just... Work with two of the greatest idiots of all time. <laughs> if they get Brown back, Gerard Brown back, and Murphy back, can they win the premiership? Oh, I think they they can. I think they've got a really good makeup. Haven't we team. Said, start saying we? we? Mm. You got to start saying we, mate. Yeah. We can win the flag. Well, I think they can. Oh, yeah, they, they, he had, they, he had the week off. On. He had the week off. He didn't want to butt heads with his old mate. <laughs> <laughs> when we played, oh, I was cool. Few weeks mate, I was fishing. On. They're, yeah. going well. <laughs> they're going as well. They're going as well at the moment, Langy. They are. They are. They are. They are. They are really going are. better than you thought, Chris. Because uh, no, they, they started not, slightly, not, didn't they? Not better than Two I of their thought first they, five. they could go. I reckon they're playing up to their ability right now. And yeah. their list at the moment is almost, I'd say, as good as Red Hill and Karingal. So they're in it to give it a crash. So if they can get that side together toward and the end of the year and keep the momentum quickly. going. They score very quickly. And they've, they've, well, they've got, well, you've got a couple how of big you, games to How do you stop that, Paul? Oh, sorry. Basically running with their ball winners, you know, mm. you got to you got to be tagging, you know, the, um, yeah. the McGuinnesses, they're running around loose a bit more. But there was two, there was two guys that um, we, you, 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 you tell them the story about how you thought about matching up with them and all that sort of stuff. Um, well, obviously they had a few out early in the year, and we had a big emotional high that week with well, some Earthy things did. that happened. And but we played particularly well early in in that round three. We played well, but. Um, you know, we kicked six goals apiece to half time and they put nine on us in that third and they just ran really well. I think um, uh, Hamill coming back in, number four, he plays in half back, that's him. Yeah. Yeah, outstanding. Um, I'll tell you, the one who sneaks under the guard, and um, sorry, Josh, I'll throw him, throw him under the bus, is Peach, three. He's um, oh, yeah, not that good. good <laughs> footballer. Very good footballer. Um, yeah, but he just... just he, he... He's yeah. workmanlike. But he, he, you know what he does? Week. You know what he does well? He gets back and helps and then pushes forward well. A good two-way um, runner, Brett. Outstanding yeah. footballer. And um, who's on the... Oh, I'll tell you, he's dropped some kilos from earlier in the year. Melfi, he's, he's yeah. run into some form. He well, looks, he's another one that didn't looks play good the first half of the year. And yeah. he uses the ball really well and gets yeah. metres gained too, Dan. He's the sort of bloke that you want to give it to on the outside. So you get negative yeah. against him behind yeah. the ball. 
Yeah. yeah. And Biggs See, is a tricky matchup for a lot of sides. Like we yeah. were lucky. We had a um, guy who matched up pretty well, held him to two. Yeah. But he, he will... Last six week, on the weekend. He, yeah, he'll he test fa- a lot of backmen because of his size. Yeah. He was and fantastic then, on the weekend. And then they get Murphy back. Hmm. He, of course, one. has had a lot of injuries this year. Yeah. That shoulder is a lot worse than most of us oh, thought, isn't it? Yeah. shoulder, Danny, he just had a, a mild concussion. Right. But they wanted to just rest him. Did Bixie yeah. tackle him at training? Yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, that's yeah. the second time in a let's, row. Let's move on. <laughs> Ambience Catering, one of our wonderful sponsors. Uh, great to have, uh, again, the team part of what we do every week on Game Face. Two consecutive defeats to Chelsea. See them drop to fourth. Uh, I've seen a little bit of Chelsea in recent times. Hulks, and with the greatest respect, I'm not sure they are a top three team. No, they've cemented their side in. I think they're a bit well, they're fourth off then. the top. How can yeah. they be a top three? Well, they have been up. <laughs> it's a finish. And they're now, they're now fourth. Thank you, <laughs> Well, they've they're cemented their spot in the finals, so they will play finals if they're up to the scratch of Lang Warren and uh, Karingal and Red Hill. We're still not sure. Well, oh, they been, still haven't really. Been, oh, I know the, the Red Hill, sorry, the Chelsea and Lang Warren game was a, in tough conditions, but they lost to Karingal. Mm. You know, they kicked six goals to to two in the first quarter and only kicked one more for the rest of the game mm. against Kringle on the weekend. They actually and was... Same, and, and the Red Hill match only kicked three for the whole match. Well, and that after quarter time, it was 10-18 to 2-1. Mm. Yeah. Now, if you're Jeez. going up against the good sides, you can't have a spell like that. No, you can't. And you can't be expected... And it's a tough to turn it around from a, from a belting like that. That's just domination. Well, one of their most popular clubmen, um, Lex Zibris, they think has done his ACL. They're not 100% sure yet, Was he but they'll know tomorrow. Number 29. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finger on the pulse, ran, I think he ran with Burke last week and, yeah, he did it maybe in that third quarter. Tough running with a 40-year-old, isn't it? Mm. Brad, yeah. Brad, is he? He's not 40, is he? 38. <laughs> he's 38, is he? Yeah, he's a couple of years younger than me. Very star. good player. Yeah, he's been a star for a long yeah. time. And also, Brad Clark's got a hammy. He's out for a couple of weeks. And just he's for Seaford. Overseas too. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, they do. Oh, they yeah, they've been a bit unlucky. Yeah. Just on yeah. Seaford, can they stay in the finals if they get Curtis Baker back from a shoulder, Dean Kemble back from a calf, Kieran Shaw with a knee, Josh Stokes with a groin, Sam Loney, one of their key players with a groin, and as you guys were saying off air, Raw Fish has hardly played. He's had a foot injury. The guys won't want to hear this, um, but having a look at it, they've got Crib Point and Rye, which you think they'll win. And they start favourite ha- in every game. Yeah, they play and they've got Hastings without Rogash. Um, mm-hmm. which is going to be easier for them without mm-hmm. Rogash than it is with. And they need to drop one for these guys to get in. So yeah. you'd think they'd start favouring every one of them. Um, some of you are coming like a train, but they need things to go right. Is it, oh, a, always an upset. Yeah. Is it annoying, 100%, Paul? 100%. Is it annoying knowing that it's sort of out of your hands a bit? You can only do what you can do. Oh, you, you've no, got to keep winning, which annoying, means it's in yeah. your hands a bit, but you've yeah. got to rely on a few results going your oh, way. Oh, we do, we do, and we just hope they obviously get the job done. But, you know, we've got our work. Ahead of us as well. Even so Rye is no uh, easy game at the last last round. No, uh, they knocked off. Who they knocked off last week? They Hastings. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. So Rye's playing some good footy at the they moment. Are, yeah. And Tommy Baker's come back from a knee injury. He's got better as yeah. the year's gone on. So well, hopefully, see if we don't get them back this week, so Rye can have them. Well, well they, they reckon they reckon Todd Gardner has kicked the goal of the year in the third quarter. Paul Wilson and Glenn Carter who had the biggest day of all time on Saturday, our boss. <laughs> well, he, he was up. I'll tell you a quick story on oh, that. No. He was up at 4.30, up at Sparrow, double Sparrow. He had to get a caravan out because we were having a bit of a look at the Western Region Football League, which I did, West Footscray, North Footscray, two second division teams, and they're both red and white, playing under lights in one of the most picturesque, narrow... Cute grounds I've ever seen. West Foot's great at the K Short Reserve. Won't take long, Chris. I know you're looking at your watch. And uh, so he, he, he took the caravan there. Then he went back and he called the footy with Paul. And uh, and then he came back and was involved in our coverage of West Footscray, North Footscray. So he certainly worked hard, the big fella. Yeah, no now, wonder he's still asleep. Yeah, no wonder he's still asleep. <laughs> uh, good on you, Glenn. Uh, you can wake up now. It's been three days. Uh, Todd Gardner. <laughs> has kicked goal of the year in the third quarter. Have a look at this. Supporters love Big Holty. Every time he goes near it, they erupt. So Carter, Zane Carter, beautiful kick out to Foster. Handballs quickly to Gardner. One bounce, two bounce, three bounce. Could go four, and he does. Could go five, could go six. Five bounces, drop, punt, on the way! That's goal of the day, got to be. the... Ex-golf. Goal of the day. Todd Gardner, take a bow. Take a bow, Toddy Gardner. Fine bounces from the centre of the ground all the way. Fantastic goal there. And that was just (laughs) against against the play there. And uh, Toddy Gardner 
And he needed that. He needed that to lift his team because there were a lot of them are standing back ball watching while Karingal are going hard at it against the wind. And he said, listen, boys, this is how you do it. Back to a one-point ball game. 6-10-46, 7-3-45. Beautiful goal there by Toddy Garda. That was definitely the uh, ex-Golf Mornington goal of the day there, if you don't mind, please, umpire. Up they go. Well... Your, your man, Blackers, good all, too good on the ruck again. Yeah, he's a good ruckman. He didn't play against Red Hill and they still won comfortably. Yeah, yeah, he needed to rest himself against Red Hill and um, those colder conditions for Big Grant. But on the weekend, his ruck work was really dominant. And what he does is he puts it down the throat of his on-ballers. How does he go against Big Red, Norton? Uh, That'd be a good tussle. Yeah, it was a fantastic... Uh, First time around, Dan, wasn't it? I was until the third quarter. I think no, Big right. I think Big Red got a bit frustrated in a couple of occasions. Dropped an easy mark and they scored a goal against no, no, yeah. against the trend, Karingal, and then he kicked one out of bounds on the full. But other than that, no, I thought no. he played okay. That's right. And and Goodall was good around the ground. He was. I thought his left foot was really good. But I, I thought it was a really good even contest. At that stage, I thought Goodhall probably just necked him at the end. Mick Gay, and we all know how big that unit was, yeah. he always said that Goodall and Norton, he always pulled up the sorest after that's those them, two, yeah. just big bodies smashing. I think them. it's going to be another really good contest on the weekend about with those two guys. And what about Dylan Gregson? Is he one of the most improved players in the comp? Has he always yeah. been one of the better fullbacks? No, he has, and he's most improved. Yeah. Um, he's really put on some size, which we've spoken about before. But the one that flies under the radar too is Cal Dixon. He's having a cracking yeah. year, and he's one of the better small backs in the comp. Yeah. So those two, they've got really good young defenders that are going to be there for a long time. Happy wife, happy partner, happy life. Of course, Emily, who's our uh, general manager of operations, uh, is uh, his partner. And Andy McGuinness in great form too. And I still don't know why Brad and Paul... He didn't play more league footy at Carlton. I saw him play a final against Essen in 2011, and I thought, this kid's good. And I spoke to a couple of my Carlton mates, and they loved him. And then he did his knee, but well, he can play. He took 10 marks in the last quarter against us. He yeah. intercepted everything. He was outstanding. He's a, he's a very, very good player. We'll take a break and be back with more shortly. Division 2 footy show. Wonderful to have the boys from Somerville with us tonight. Joining myself, Dan Lonigan, along with Tony Blackford and also Chris Holcomb. Get your game face on. And the Garley Trophy Centre, looking at our tips from last week. Uh, Hulks, you and I, four out of six. Black is in great form, five out of six. I only tip safer to annoy Blackers, so I shouldn't count that one. So I should be five out of six. You've been tipping against Lang Warren all year, Hulks. Only yeah, when you turn been. up. I'm here every week. <laughs> what, did I, the game. what did I get wrong? Oh, you uh, get everything wrong. Are you yeah. Yeah. Hastings? Oh, Hastings I got wrong. Right. Yeah. 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 You picked Crib Point. Because they were having the big day. Oh, I was, that's they, right. Just, I just to quickly point mention point about... And that was an outstanding day, they the coach told me. $12,000. Is that right? Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. no it's a pay They owned it. Yeah. Dogs? <laughs> Sorry? Quick well, point. What about it? <laughs> they raised over $12,000 for on. cancer. Lukey took uh, his hair yeah. off? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Lukey Harrington got rid of the old... Um, Dreadlocks? Oh, yeah. skipper, is it? Is that yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've, got a, I've got to buy you a pineapple, yeah, a don't I, from the fruit shop. That's right. Yeah, because still I, 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 I still haven't yeah, got the actual pineapple. No, well, the pineapple is, that's what it is, a well, pineapple from the fruit shop. It's yeah, still yeah okay. it in. I like pineapples, they're very nice, thanks, aren't they? Thanks for that, Dan. Let's have a look at the ladder predictor, SPT performance, which have been a big part of what we've done all year. Going to be very, very interesting in uh, the run home. And the ladder predictor at this stage has Red Hill finishing on top, beating Rye, Devon Meadows and Lang Warren. Do you guys agree with that? Concur. I concur, Dan. You concur. Thank you. Which means you agree. Uh, Karinga will finish second. Uh, they've got Lang Warren, Tyab and Piersdale. The last two. Now, Brad, if yes. you had a team in the finals up there like that, would you be a little bit concerned, with the greatest respect, playing Tyab and Piersdale last two? Are they two easy matches no, oh, to get yourself ready for the final? Just Fine. keep playing. Just keep playing. Yep. Don't Top. flirt with your form, Dan. Don't Top flirt with your form. You can only flirt with women, Dan. That's right. Top the master. Before these hey. <laughs> well, I haven't got there yet, flirting with women. Oh, I'll get out of this. Uh, Lang Warren, uh, I'm a good boy, remember? No, you're not. You good. swipe left all the time. Do I? Yeah, you do. Have you heard that rumour, have you? No, you told me. Oh, thanks. Um, now, Lang Warren will finish third, uh, according to the ladder predictor. Karingal, Piersdale and Red Hill. The ladder predictor's got Karingal... Uh, being beaten by Lang Warren, they'll beat Pearsdale. Have you done this? And then they'll uh, take on. Then they'll play Red Hill and probably lose to Red Hill, which will be a, a terrific match for them I to get know, ready for the finals. Lose that one. I mm. think they're right in that up to their eyeballs, mm. Dan. It's a little yeah. unusual. I, like Karingal have been outstanding, but, but uh, they're still not like the favourites for the flag. Unusually, like Red Hill, they're yeah. happy with that, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're yeah. very happy with that. Red Hill's but, footy know, is the best footy. Someone's got them, Lang Warren, to beat them. 
Yeah. Again. But if it's but if it's wet in the finals, if it's wet if it's wet in the finals, Red Hill will be in trouble. Oh, right. They're, yeah. they're a good young running side, Red Hill. Yeah, but they I, are. You know, I reckon Langwarren are a dangerous Ooh. side going around, to be honest. You think so? I like it. From what I've played, played be, against, yeah, I reckon. Be they great. They've got a not, combo Not down. knowing. Langy got a good combo. They've got mm. some size, but they've got some good speed. Yes. Yeah. So that, they'd be the team to make you nervous. Looking forward to it. Well, Chelsea are fourth, and uh, the ladder predictors got them winning all three games to finish on 52. Seaford, and they play Hastings, Ryan, Devon Meadows. Seaford. Uh, have got uh, Crip Point, Hastings and Rye. They win all three. They're on 36 at the moment to go to 48. And Somerville, the ladder predictor boys, have got you winning all three. Piersdale, Cribby and Hastings to finish on 44. And Hastings to lose all three. And they'd be disappointed with that. Hulks, if they lost all three, Hastings, wouldn't they? One that got away again for them, like they, last year. They would, but they're up against it at the moment. They're probably the last ones that you'd pick out of those three pushing for that final spot, especially mm. if the Rogash out. That's a massive yeah, yeah. And McVay, if his hand's not right, we Whoa. know what a terrific runner he is on half day. Yeah, he's Come an excellent in. player. He's excellent. Now, the Franks and RSL goal kicking. Mark Holt, four last week to go to 62. Aaron Walton didn't kick any. He remains on 49, one short of his 50. Jonathan Ross back in the goal kicking after a couple of weeks where he, uh, well, I wouldn't say he went missing, he just didn't kick goals for a couple of weeks. Had a quiet game in the wet against Karingal the previous week. He kicked two to go to 46. Uh, the G-man, six goals to go to 43. Ryan Gillis, quick story there, Paul. When I saw him, and I saw him go to the three-quarter time huddle in the Chelsea match, I'm thinking, this guy's got interesting hair. Little did I know that he had... Tats all, tats, tats all over yeah. his head. Has he got tats everywhere, everywhere on his mate. body? Everywhere. everywhere. Except for one leg. I don't know which leg, but yeah, he's... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a unit G-man. But um, unfortunately, yeah, he's, uh, he's kicked six and he's, he's put on the show for the boys. Wiggers mate's in the box, in the sponsor's box. So, yeah. yeah. He's he, he, actually he, taking photos during the game, I think. Uh, is he a laid-back fellow, Brad? Uh, no, no. no. He's, hard, he's bloody hard work. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, he, but he's... Um, he, he, look, he's hard work, but he's uh, manageable and uh, his heart's in the right spot. Yeah. Um, he's passionate about footy and passionate about winning. Um, he's got some leadership qualities that you don't necessarily see, you know, and they come through sort of revving the boys up. And when we actually get him at, off the massage table and onto the training track, he trains Something. really well. Um, so Him and his brother. He's good for local footy. His brother comes in. We've got, we've got a rub list and his brother would just come in, Nathan just... Pop his name straight at the top. So they write it, else they take it in turns. They write Nathan, yeah, G-Man, then Poppy. What was it like when you first met him? Honest, you don't want to hear the story when I first met him. I heard a lot about him. I've rocked up the pre-season and we're all busting our chops, doing laps, and he's on the sidelines having a six-pack. Yeah. And then I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, well, I'm just going to have a chat to you. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
I mean, definitely he's, he's, he's a real motivator, is he? Oh, he is. Good. 100%, yeah. That's, uh, there, That's what we need. There's not enough of that in film. No, there's not. Uh, too many serious people. The John Kennedy and the David Parker, as David Parker Correct. used to say, yeah, a bit of Marx, a bit of Winston Churchill that was sensational Did you stuff, know Winston apparently. Churchill? No, I didn't, didn't have the pleasure <laughs> of meeting Winston Churchill. <laughs> yeah. If I had time, I'd tell you my John Kennedy uh, no, we got story. Time, we haven't got time, haven't though. Time. No, we haven't. Sorry. We're uh, talking too much. Having a good time, though. Sammy all around. <laughs> uh, I think Sammy all around. Sammy. La- Lang Warren in Coringal we'll match of the day. This is a massive game at Lloyd Park, and this is Langy's big chance to prove they are legitimate. Yep. Um, whether or not, because Stanley still won't be playing, which no. is a massive for uh, Coringal. Robinson? I think, yeah, Robinson's still out, I believe. Yeah. I think uh, I tipped Coringal against Red Hill. I'm going to tip Langy against Coringal this week. I'm going Langy, huh? Hey? Mm-hmm. Oh, Just. Tight game, though. Yeah. yeah. I think Langy. I think I'm. Um, We're going to draw this year. Oh, no. I'll go the draw. No, no, but you're going to go draw? Yeah, 40 to 1. Let's yeah, take that. Yeah. 40 to 1. They had a draw in the Outer East, but no, they haven't had a draw okay. here. Yeah, what do you reckon? Langy. I think Lang, I think why will you win? Or why will Lang Warren no, win? Well, Black well Dan, you were there for the, the last game and Coringle got off to a wonderful start. No yeah. halt that day, but they really shared the ball around yeah. and they had different avenues to go. Stanley didn't play either, but Robinson went forward and Patterson took, took Robinson. Um, Lang, you're up and about at the moment. I, I think Dunny's a super coach. He'll do his homework on Lang, 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 on Lang Warren um, and he'll get his matchups right. I just think that at home... In front of the Langwarren crowd, I think that they'll get over the line in a real good game. Banana skin for Red Hill boys against Rye? That's because Rye are playing well? I think, this is a, I, think, I actually think it's a game that Red Hill will enjoy because Rye are in good nick and it'll push them. Mm. Um, and I know we're talking about form going into the finals, but this will be a game that I think um, Red Hill will be looking forward to to you know, just give them a little challenge. This time of the year? Well, I think we're going to need a dry day on Saturday, so I think Red Hill will be all over the Rye boys. What do you think, Yeah, Paul? Red Hill as well, mate. Yep. Red Hill. They scored one goal last week. Didn't they? Yeah, uh, yeah. Hopefully they can kick a good score. And Tyab against Devon Meadows. And speaking to Neil Craig, he was the light of the boys had a good win last week. There's a big opportunity for them. Tyab have been disappointing, but uh, they are at home and you'd probably pick the home team. Yeah, because they've been running most people. It's only yeah. last week they got blew out. They haven't been blown out all year. They should have nearly beat Karingal. Yes. Uh, not that well, they should far. have beaten them. Yeah. Were, that was at In front all day. That was only yeah. these guys that got hold of them last week. I reckon mm. they would have copped it on the track this week and I reckon they were pants. Do you think they would have been a bit more competitive yeah. last week? Yeah, yeah well, we thought it was um, a, danger a little bit of a danger game, yeah. a little bit of a drop-off game, but... Um, yeah, we kicked five straight into the wind in the first quarter and I was I turned to my board man and said, we're on here. So, um, yeah, we thought we'd get a little bit more of a push, but I reckon Devon might give him a run there. Eh? It'll be an interesting game. Well, boys, time for you, time for me as well. Thank you, Blackers. Thank you, Hulks. Uh, that's the second division footy show done and dusted. I'd like to thank Brad Canavan for coming in from Somerville, the coach. Well done, Brad, doing a great thanks, job. Dan. Paul, good to have you in the competition. Yeah, thanks, You're going magnificently. Great to have you with us. And we'll have more Second Division footy show next week. Get your game face on. Get your game face on.